What's up, what's up, world? She man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man. I'm down here at Wayne County Community College. Uh, we're about to do the Black Male Leadership Conference right here. And uh, yours truly will be on the panel. So y'all make sure y'all stand by and kick it with your man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man, so we can do something to get these kids together. We got to get them together because that's our future, isn't that right? So right now, everybody is, um, coming in and getting arranged and everything. I'm going to try to see if I can see uh, Malik out here, uh, but I don't see Malik out here. But, oh, I do see Sexy Shakinya. Hey, Motor City Radio is in the house. Well, today I'm Miss Wardlaw. I'm not Sexy Shakinya. I'm Miss Wardlaw with Manpower Mentoring, and I am promoting the State of the Leader Black Male Leadership Conference. We're down here at the downtown campus, Wayne County Community College. Let's walk, Sam, man, because we got a job here going on. We got plenty of people hiring today. Um, do not film home and security. Okay. Yeah, do not film Oh, Sam man down drug in your way, y'all. Now drug your way. Okay. Do not it's on us. Okay. okay so we we're, we're doing just Are you able to turn the screen? Yeah. Okay, do not turn it on us. Right. That's secret service. So what you can do is you can um film this right here. Okay. All right, guys. As you can see, we have the United States Secret Service down here. They are hiring. Yes, they are. So I need you to calm down. Come on down. We're looking for a job. Yes, they are. We're going to do the speaking of the daughter. It's a beautiful event. The city would like that. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. The right now has a lot of issues of poverty and stuff like that. This is Keith Wood. This is Sam Mae, Mr. Williams. How you doing? We got you on Facebook Live as well, Sam. Let people know. Do you have a few minutes? Can you let people know what you got going on down here? Well, I am Keith Wood, the director of the for the Wayne County Sheriff. I'm trying to find young men, 18 year old, young men and women, 18 years old, 18 years old with a high school diploma or GED. Uh, if you can meet those qualifications, you can't have a felony. You got to be able to be a Michigan resident and have a valid driver's license. If you meet all those requirements, then you can get a job with the Wayne County Sheriff. We started at $35,000, uh, 401k, vacation time, tuition reimbursement, eye and uh, optical and dental, and health insurance. You can't get no better than that. Be a part of the solution or be a part of the problem. I want you to we need you. We need your help. You hear what he said? Be a part of the solution or a part of the problem. And all y'all are part of the problem. You. So come on down here. We down here, Wayne County Community College, Juban, one only Mr. Sam 44 man. And hey, there's those jobs. We got those jobs. But you gotta be right though. You gotta be legit. Because we're gonna do a background check on it. Doc, we got the doc in the house. We got doctors about. in the house. Prison prevention. Yay. Prison prevention. Right. Prison prevention. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Well, my name is Myron Fontaine, also known as the prison doctor, and I speak about prison prevention. A lot of our youths are going to prison at fast rates. My job is to help them not go there, give them some of the experiences and some of the knowledge that can help them not go. So I'm here today at Wayne County Community College with these great people, just trying to meet our young people and just tell them prison is not a place they want to go. I also do house calls where I go to a teen's home, a troubled teens home and I do a one hour intervention with them and hopefully I can help the parents uh, make their child make a better better choices in life so they don't go to prison. Well see once again your man's with these people that's trying to do things to help these people and matter of fact we're going to probably be on the same panel together because uh, you know I got skills too and ex-con and successful business owner so therefore it's getting in touch with people like this is what is really going to help us and our young men to establish you know, who they are and what they can do because it's hard in the street yes, it's very hard in the street very hard. Well, so, my dad is a funk brother play with Marvin Gale and what's going on I grew up very very privileged but sometimes, you know, having that kind of a background is not always helpful if you don't have the right tools. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I'm here today to hopefully, uh, hopefully give some of these kids the right tools and uh, information so they don't end up behind prison bars. Hey, listen to the prison doctor. That's what he said. But, you know, 
Um, I'm going to have uh, myself down here. And we're going to just go around um, with Shakinya Whitlow. She's not... We out here networking. In the city, but we out here networking. We got it all. But y'all, so y'all come on down here. Wayne County Community College right now. Downtown campus. We got more to go. Yeah, we got some more people. So, uh, what we got? St. John's Providence in the house. Oh, okay. Here it is. Good again. morning. How are you doing, young lady? Hi, how are you? Sir? And what are you representing? We represent World Cap Financial. We do financial services, life insurance, retirement plans, and college funds. Oh, it's your life, people. Cool. It's your life. You have, we have a program ages 0 through 17. It's $30 once a year for $25,000 in coverage. Wow. All y'all need to get down here. Wayne County Community College, the campus downtown. Can yes, ma'am. You can give us a phone number. Can I say our phone yeah, number? Yes, yeah. Our phone number, our office number is area code 313-312-1522, extension 101. And that's World Cap Financial. Yes. All right, Joe. Southfield, Michigan. All right. And we are here. Yeah, they have a free ID program. Come on, come on, no. Come on, no. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us what you're doing and who um, you're representing. We're servicing clients today. We're doing a special for our men. Uh, free ID for dads. This program is operated by the city of Detroit. And dads can come down and take advantage of this program and get a free ID card and take advantage of the discounts that go along with the card. Okay. And we're just uh, doing a, a wonderful job here helping our men that's to, what we need. to service them. And that's what we really need. So please come down and take advantage of this. Guys and gals, come down and take advantage of the free ID card from the city of Detroit. And you're in support of it too? Absolutely. Um, my colleague right there was Ms. Pat Williams, who works with the City of Detroit ID card program. And I also work with the program. I'm Dr. Paula Cruz Takash. This program, our campaign today, as Ms. Uh, Williams said, is to support all fathers um, who live in the City of Detroit to be, who are trying to be and are great dads and men. Um, but the program is broad. It's for everyone who lives in the city of Detroit. We work in particular with those groups that do not have a government ID. This is what the ID looks like. It is a bona fide government ID issued by the city of Detroit, and we are working closely. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We work very closely with um, folks who are homeless, with the service providers, so shelters. We work very closely with uh, folks coming out of prison who are on probation. So we, uh, the Michigan Department of Corrections has uh, uh, has reached out to us because of the issue of government ID that is needed by that population. So every month we're down at the Lawton uh, Parole Office um, as one of those service providers. We work very closely with at-risk kids, um, with um, special needs young adults who need the ID in order to get jobs. Um, but we also work, or we also provide the card for those of us who are ID privileged, those of us who have ID do not realize the difficulty that folks have navigating everyday life without an ID. So it's a way that those of us who are ID privileged can support the program for all of our relatives and neighbors and friends, even strangers who don't have an ID. But it also gives us, with the, with the Detroit ID card, access to over 140 merchants, local merchants, that give great discounts. So one example, because he's such a great um, partner to the program is Hot Sands retail, Men's Retail Shop. 30% off when you show your Detroit ID card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there in the store. And there, again, people can just Google, simply Google Detroit ID, and our website pops up. You hit that, that website, you can make an appointment on your phone, you can make an appointment uh, right there online, or you can just go down to benefits, you hit benefits, and all of those benefits pop up exactly what the percentage of discount is, where to find them, the address, their websites, etc. So please come down to our Samaritan office. We're at the Samaritan Center, the Great Samaritan Center, I must say. Um, on Connor Street, 5555 Connor Street, and we're also at the Patent Recreation Center in the southwest side. So if you, and I'm looking at you now holding the camera, if you... I like her! If you, don't I you, like 
Walker. the city of Detroit and you don't have your Detroit yeah, ID yet, yet, you need to come down and get it. <laughs> come and get it. I'm there telling you. you. And she's helping you that's out there that's just coming out on the street. Like I said, tomorrow, you know, I'm ex-con. Um, this is something that can be very helpful to you guys just getting out back out and reestablish yourself in society. So, you know, we need to be at these programs, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's all about. Many gentlemen and many ladies who are, have come out of prison, come out of jail, and they come and get their um, their, mission, their uh, city of Detroit ID card. You can use your MDOC or other kinds of ID cards in order to qualify for this card. All right. Okay, so All please right. come on down. Well, We're waiting you for you with much. open arms. I appreciate you. <laughs> thank right. you very much. This right. is a beautiful woman right here Thanks. doing some very good things for the city of Detroit. Your yeah, man, I'm just down here, you know, we're, we're just come, going on the stroll yes. with Kenya. We got another young man right here that's representing Alex in the house. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing how's it going today? Who you represent? I represent the Wayne County Treasurer's Office. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal with delinquent property taxes. Okay. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, have the stigma that we're here to take your home. We are not. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. We, they are not here take take, we are not here to take your home. Um, that's why we have four different payment plans available mm -hmm. um, to stop the foreclosure process. Um, so you can always come to our office. We're located at 400 Monroe um, on the fifth floor of the International Building. Um, you can come in and speak with any one of the cashiers. They, they would um, be available for you to um, enroll in any payment plan. So basically, a person doesn't have to lose their home. All they need to do is give you a call and work out an arrangement. Correct, correct. Once uh, they become delinquent with their city of Detroit property taxes, mm -hmm. they're sent over to Wayne County, mm -hmm. um, and we're there to um, you know collect on the property taxes that weren't paid to the city of Detroit. Um, and once it crosses that three-year threshold, that's when the property becomes foreclosed. Um, but you have three whole years to get in a payment plan to avoid the property from being foreclosed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hold on for a second. How long did you say you got? Three years. Three years. You got three whole years to get it together. Three. Now, if it takes you three years to get it together, you really slow as a turtle. But this man said, you can come down here three years you got to get your program together and uh, keep yourself from being foreclosed on your house. You know, nobody want to be homeless out here. We are not here. here to take your home. We are not here to take your home. We want to help. We want to help. Ain't nothing you can say. He said we're here to t not take your home, but we're here to work with you to keep your home. So that's a beautiful thing. We're going to move on. Thank you, my man, for your time. And this beautiful young lady here, she's representing for another court. Oh, out, baby man. daddy. Baby daddy, you better watch out. Hi. What's your name, dear? My name's attorney Shelly Payne, senior okay. staff attorney with the Wayne County Criminal Court. And how do you help out uh, your young men that's out here that really We have so many help. programs. If your child support is too high, mm -hmm. then you file a motion, I brought that over there, a motion 4035, and they can adjust your child support. If part of your support is owed to the state of Michigan, then you will file a um, arrears forgiveness form. And so whatever's owed to the state of Michigan, you give them a reasonable explanation as to why you have that arrears that's owed to the state, they'll wipe it out. Oh um, my yeah, God! People. Wait a minute, hold on. She just told me something I didn't know. I need this. Okay, take I it. That's this. what. That's what. I don't want to take nothing with me. <laughs> I need All right. That. Okay. If you, uh, if you have uh, custody of your child, or, or you have physical custody of your child and it hasn't been legally sanctioned, you file a motion to change custody. You have. Um, I told. If the support is too high, motion to change uh, child support. If you uh, have signed on a birth certificate and we're charging you and you find out later, you have three years to do it though. Mm -hmm. If you find out later that child's not yours, but within three years of the time you find out or whatever, you file a motion to uh, set aside the your uh, affidavit of parentage. Mm -hmm. We have all type of things. All you have to do is come. We, uh, we do some very friendly things. Mm -hmm. uh, what you got is kind of concentrate on is the non-friendly things, and I do that too, but I'm, we're fair because we do friendly things. Mm -hmm. And if you have a bench warrant, all they have to do is come in here, I'll, we'll help you. And I want you to look at this because on the 13th of October, we're going to be at the um, Detroit Public Library mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Woodward, Woodward. Mm -hmm. 
and you bring five hundred dollars for per case, and we'll wipe it out. Wait a minute. Wipe say that the, again. See, a lot of people have bench warrants, okay? okay? And they're afraid to come. They run around bench warrants on. Right, them. right. You bring five hundred dollars per case. And we'll wipe out your bench warrant and get you started again. And while you're there, we'll tell you you need to uh, what you need to do with regard to getting rid of your state arrears. Mm -hmm. um, now the woman, what you owe the woman, you got to pay. But if you need it modified, you can modify it. You can change it. If you and her agree that you paid, you can go to the consent document. Oh my God, I need that. Uh huh. Oh, this is. This is my new friend. She's about to help me get out of thirty thousand dollars. I didn't raise my kids, yes. had them in my home, I, and the mama didn't do nothing. Oh, She's about to I'm help me. Now, you take that with you, and you um, you can come down and, and, and fix it up. All you have to do is come. Don't run from us. Run to us. Right. Because we have answers. And, and you I'm, say once again that is Saturday, October thirteenth, yes. one to four p.m. At the Detroit Public Library downtown okay, sure Detroit, there. and you make sure you come because she's gonna be there to help you out and do what you need to get done. Right. Thank you very much. You we appreciate so your time. Well, thank now you. we're gonna walk over here, and we have a lady here, Blue Cross Complete of Michigan. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? What's your name? My name is Lisa. And what are you representing? I am representing Blue Cross Complete of Michigan. We are a Medicaid plan provided through the state of Michigan. Um, anyone can uh, qualify under whatever guidelines the state require. Um, we've got literature here to tell you how to apply, where to go, where to call, and we also have some if health information on the table for you as well. Okay. So you are basically into like families that don't have health care plans? Families, individuals, mm -hmm. and if they qualify for Medicaid, we're a plan you can choose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all make sure y'all come down here and see this pretty lady down here at Wayne County Community College. Now we're going back down here to Express Employment Professionals. And who are these individuals? <laughs> that are representing. What's your name? My name's Brittany. Um, uh, Brittany. This is RC. Hi Brittany. What's your name? RC, just like the cola. <laughs> okay, RC and Brittany. So tell us what you're doing. So we are here um, giving some information about what we do. We are Express, and Express Employment Professionals of Roseville. Mm -hmm. So we are a staffing agency. We don't like the word temp because our long-term goal is to put people to work mm -hmm. at long-term positions. Uh, we offer many positions throughout the Detroit area, Hamtramck, Highland Park, Warren, Roseville, East Point, St. Clair Shores. We offer everything from office administration to general and manual labor. Okay. Okay. And as long as you're ready, willing, and able to work, we will put you to work. And what are some of the requirements? Uh, just want to work. Yeah, pretty much. Just work. Yeah, just we have positions work. for everyone. No skills needed. Oh, okay. So you do train. Yeah. Um, it depends on the client, but a lot of them are general labor positions, and they are willing to train on site. Okay, that's a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, check form, them out. Two forms of ID are required for the interview. That's about the extent of it. Yep. Y'all right. can come up with two forms of ID. Come on, stop playing. Express employment professionals right here. And here we have another young lady. I knew it. <laughs> oh, thank you. And what's your name? Who are you representing? My name is Dame, and I am with the Community Education Commission. I'm part of Franian Consulting, and we put together the Detroit Parents Guide to School. Okay. So and tell us a little bit about that. So this is a one-stop shop mm -hmm. for all Detroit public schools and charter schools. Mm -hmm. And the guide is designed to assist parents in finding the schools in their neighborhood and then getting information on each school from security to uniforms to what time they open to any other information you're looking for, phone numbers, principal name, contact information. Plus, we have additional resources and information in the back of the book regarding public schools and charters in the city. All in one stop. And you can actually find a searchable website for the guide under DetroitSchoolsGuide.com. Okay. We did a book and we did a live website. So I'm here to get uh, these 
books into the hands of our mothers and fathers. And I'll you're and say, now, and, and you get some sunglasses. And <laughs> the white sunglasses are the sunglasses for the summer. Okay. So yes, please take and sunglasses. And you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good thing because school is starting soon, very, very soon. So you need to get on down here. Wayne County Community College downtown campus. Check her out. Yeah, make it as easy as we can. I'm, try, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. But we go. We got some more to cover. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Now, right here, we have. Excuse me. Uh huh. My bad, brother. The fight. Like, no, you're all right. Want to get the you on her Fight a, like a man. Fight like a man for right. your health. All and right. She is the representative. What's your name, dear? Karen Gilcher. And what do you do? I work for MIU Men's Health Foundation and I help put on the men's health event. We try, we, we screen for the most treatable diseases for the men. We do $1,800 of health care testings, EKGs, blood draws, skin cancer checks, oral cancer checks, colorectal cancer screening, and then I'm one of the people that um, help follow up with the gentleman after. If they don't have a medical doctor, I can help guide them within the community to find free low-cost health clinics and, and get on that treatment course so that they can take care of their problems. So if a person wants to get in touch and want to touch bases with you, how do they do that? Sure. They can go to our website. It's miumenshealthfoundation.org or email us at info at miumenshealthfoundation.org. Thank you. We Thank you so much. You. I hope to see you on September 29th. September right. 29th. That's right, y'all. Forward Field. Make sure you be there. Thank you. And we're coming up to the deep. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> you know who it is. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Going, that's going. Yes, y'all representing the Detroit Police Department. Tell us your name. Yes, sir. I'm Officer Payne. It's my partner, Officer Wesley. And uh, like you said, what we got here, we do the positions for the police officers. We got got to be 18 years old. High school diploma or GED, valid driver's license, no felonies, U.S. citizen. And you gotta have corrective vision or 2020 vision. So glasses, contacts, you're good to go. What kind of vision you gotta see when yeah. you got okay. the bullets? The <laughs> <laughs> X-ray vision. Hey, paid training though, man. Paid trainers. 1864 okay. an hour, full benefits, medical, dental, everything from day one in the police academy. And it's only six months. And we need our people to do this job, you know. Yeah. We definitely do. Yeah. Hey, it's your man. Now you know. I know a lot of I know the police chief. I know the Wayne State Police Chief. You know what's not. I know them. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's 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 not always a bad thing, you know what I'm saying? Because if you wanna make change in your city, there you go, right there. You gotta do it. I mean, you can't be on me, you snitch, you know. These are the people that are protecting us. And we, we, we give our life to making sure that they protect us. So, hey, you don't have to feel bad. Come on down here, Wayne County Community College downtown campus, and get yourself signed up. And what did you say you need to have again? So, high school diploma or GED, valid driver's license, no felonies, U.S. citizen, 2020 vision are corrected. You can call us. Um, got my number is 313-418-9221. Or you can text me, Officer Payne, Officer Wesley. Reach out to us. Holler at him. Y'all see him in the hood. Thank y'all very much, gentlemen. We appreciate you. Now, we're going to the final stage here. And it looks like teach driver's ed. For y'all that need to know how to drive, Sears got you right here. And this is the young lady that's representing. How you doing, Good, dear? how are you? We've got some job. My name's Diane, and we've got some job opportunity at Sears Driving School. For driving instructors and teachers, flexible hours, great what pay. Are the requirements? requirements is that you have a driver's license. You have to get certified through us, so we have a, a learning program that you have to go through for certification. Once that's done, you can either um, sign a contract with us, which would reimburse you for paying for the course of getting your certification. Um, otherwise, uh, you are then an instructor. And what's your age requirement? There really isn't, as long as you have, I mean, you have to be 18, you valid, 18 and over. To, 18 and over. Yeah, yeah. To, and as long as you have a valid driver's license, yes, you're good to go. Yes. Well, hey, there you go. There you go. Teach driver's ed. Sears, right there. All right.
right. Thank you so much, honey. How are you today? Yeah, Hello. Hello. Five Star Catering. Five Star Catering. Yes. Tell us what you do. Five Star Catering, baby. Yes. Well, my name is Mrs. K. Brown. Mm -hmm. I am Five Star Banquets. I've been existing since 2014. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, what I do is I take you you, anyone who needs a job, I train you in a four hour class, I actually put you on a job as soon as you come out of the class once you obtain a uniform. My jobs are serving, bartending, catering, catering bar back, housemen, and housewomen. We take everyone. We are felony friendly and we are at 370 and hiring and, and continuing, I'm sorry. So we are five star bankers. We are located at 5575 Connors. That is with Manpower Mentoring Malik. Come on, let me give you a job. Hey. I love this lady. You hear what she said? <laughs> we are felony friendly. Yes, we are. Because it, it, it takes some people like her to be able to trust you once again coming to society, but understand that by you being in society it's kind of difficult. And yeah. she's willing to give you a chance. Yeah. So Give her a call. Can they call you at what? How can they get in touch with you? Okay, five star number is 264-4351. That again is 264-4351. Five star banquets, and uh, we are open from nine to five. That's a beautiful thing. Thank well, you. thank you for your time. Thank I you really so appreciate much. you. Mr. Yeah. Sam 44 man out here. Hey, look, that's what I do. I'm out here, I'm downtown. Uh, you know my schedule. I'm a busy man. I got a lot on my plate, but I do have time to come out here and be with the people and just representing us. These, all these people are representing us. You see what I'm saying? And they're felony friendly. That's the killing part about it. It doesn't matter if you have a felony or whatever. They're still here to help you. So, I mean, this is what I do. This is what I do. I'm the man. You know I'm the man. So, I'm down here. And we're at Wayne County Community College, downtown campus. <laughs> <laughs> and come on down here and get yourself organized and get yourself together. I mean, this is part of the structure in which we need to do to get ourselves together. So once we get in ourselves together, we can come on down. And you can come on down right now because we, we really haven't even started yet. I mean, really, basically everybody is doing their thing, but... I'm gonna grab a couple of business cards so I can um, show the people um, who I just interviewed who I really am. And um, you know, come on down. There's nothing. There's nothing. I mean, if you want to get your house and your taxes together, if you want to get your, your your bills together, I mean, if, if you need a job, you know. What do you know? Here's my man. Mr. Tate, how you doing, bro? I'm doing, doing. We're out here again. See, that's what I'm telling you. These are the people that I'm connected with that are doing things, but we don't seem to know. But now we know, and I'm broadcasting it live to you. So you need to get in the go. Come on down. And come on down and check this out. We get getting started. We still got time. We still got time. We real meat of this thing yet. Right. And your man's gonna be here. Thanks. Good to see you again, my brother. Hey, I gotta get you back on my shelf. Let me know when. Oh, here. Call me up next week. Let's see what we can do. We're gonna talk about that political situation we got going on. See? Hey, man, I'm not down here joking with y'all. I'm not playing with y'all. I'm out here with the move of the shakers. That's a city councilman. That's Councilman Tate. You know? Now, I'm giving you these business cards. Y'all just see me giving me the business card. I'm expecting to see you on my show. What's your show? Detroit Raw Live. And you give me a call, and I'll put you on the show, and then we'll talk about what you do. Yeah, I got you. And then you can come on my show too. There you go. See, I got an invite. Your man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 man. We down here at the Wayne County Community College downtown campus. And uh we we down here live. These are all the people that I interviewed. All right. So y'all come on down here. We're looking for y'all brothers. Get up off the streets, player. 
get up off the streets and come on down here and participate with us so you can find out, get yourselves a job down here, get yourselves anything, you know? You're going to give me a car? Okay, because I'll show it like you be on my show. Yes, sir. Absolutely, man. Give me a car. Here you go. Yes, see? This is Hotep Christian Services, and our, we're a nonprofit, and Hotep stands for Healing Ourselves Through Excellence and Preparation. We're devoted to African American males and their families. I, I have provided Christian and clinical services for the last 30 years. Spent 25 years in the HBCUs and brought that back to Detroit. You say you vouch for that man. He say you vouch for that man. Well, our focus is body, mind, and spirit, and allowing brothers to expand their vision so that they can see beyond the block their corner to what they can be. Hey, Amen. look at me. I'm an ex-con and now I'm famous as all over. You, know? Right. You, know, you, you can't change. Anything, you, can do anything. you can do anything. He is absolutely right. And so we are just making sure this is uh, where we are. I didn't even get a chance. I don't know how I walk in this This is the Wayne State downtown campus where you can come to college. What's your name, dear? Who do you represent? My name is Shani, and I represent Manpower Mission as well as Black Girls Matter. Mm -hmm. And what are your programs about? Um, mentoring youth. And I'm sorry. Um, um, <laughs> Representing. I'm, well, I represent Black Girls Matter. However, today we are doing a Black Male Leadership Conference. Um, I like to thank my sponsors over at Sporty Cuts. I like to thank um, Davina at the Weave Shop. Um, I like to thank all the people that helped to put this beautiful event together. Um, we have worked so hard to make this beautiful day happen, and I'm so proud of um, X and Malik Belafonte, um, our leader. And I'm trying to find. Him, I don't know. You, you I'm see excited. Me? I don't know where he is. I'm excited. He's over there, right there to your left. Oh, there he to is. The right left, there. To the left, to the left. To the left, to the left. The man right there. Brother Malik. I can, I can testify I've been walking around trying to get it. I've been walking around trying to get I remember my first one. I, do. I was in New York. I was working in New York. And I was in That's Detroit, a major you know, player right was, there. I, I remember. I, I mean, that was a big was jump. Huge. And thanks to this man, and, uh, it was, this is but, why we so got these things going but, on. You know, the interesting See? Thing about it is that also thanks to that man right there, here. Brother uh, Malik. In the community, the African American community. It's your man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 man. I'm down here at Wayne County Community College, and we are about to have a seminar. You see every platform that's out here. Um, all the people that are in the positions to help you to uh, get what you need done, done. Here you go, ladies. I'm sorry I didn't give you a business card when I was recording earlier. And um, here you go, dear. Thank you. I want to make sure that everybody got a business card because I had. Um, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I um, was filming earlier and I didn't get a chance to. Um, give up my cards, but you man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 man, we're down here at Wayne County Community College. I'm down here with all the people that can help you to get whatever it is need done that you need done. That man said you got three years. They ain't trying to take your house. Just come on down and do what you got to do. So, you know, basically one of the first things it is, is you have to do and you have to make the right move and the first move first. You can't expect someone to do it for you. You have to get in your car and get your ass down here and do what you got to do. That's it. You know I don't sugarcoat nothing. But these are the people that are really trying to help you. They're giving jobs out. They are they're, they're have their booths down here. So all you got to do is come on down and check us out. And then look, we can get you a pair of cool little white glasses. Dig that. Sunglasses. Yeah, right. Not transitionals like I pay thousands of dollars to get. You can get the little white can right, right that's there. That's what you need. Killing so, it in the summer. Right. So come on down. Wayne County Community College, downtown campus. With your man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 man. All I'm just doing is going back over everybody because I didn't give them a business card. So 
Everybody's catching the business card. Look, here are the players. Like, 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 like gifts. So you get here, give us a gift. It's your man. I'm down here, Wayne County Community College, trying to help out the community and the citizens of the city of Detroit. Y'all come on down, make an effort. I mean, I'm saying the police. Hey, what you say? How much the salary? So starting off for training is 1864 and it goes up to 2818 an hour. How many of y'all making that right now? Hmm? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. <laughs> Come on. She trying to get you a job. I'm trying to tell you. I might not be the job you want, but look, it's gonna be exciting. You got a gun. Freeze! You know what I'm saying? Hey, all y'all want to do that. So Anyway, come on down here, Wayne County Community College, which man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man. I'm about to be on the panel um, to speak to these young men and uh, let them know what I do and how I get. Teriana, what lady you want me to get a car from? Cause see, I, I gotta go. I gotta go to child support. The child support lady, she down here. I got to get her, and uh, I'm going to do that, and uh, I, I got to have it. I got to have it. I ain't about to pay no child support. But, Teriana, you got to tell me, uh, who do you want me to get the car from? You tell me who you want me to get the car from, and then I'll get the car for you, okay? But these are everybody down here and your man the one and only mr sam 44 man uh i'm about to come right now and get an exclusive with my brother right here <laughs> brother malik is in the house hey how you all doing how y'all doing out there brother malik has has organized and put this thing together man and, and it's a beautiful thing to get the citizens all together like that um tell me what what is your main goal in focusing and just trying to help the cities uh, citizens of the city of detroit to put out a message to our brothers that we're just going to do everything we need to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have to ask our conqueror to help us get, have the tools to reclaim our own power uh, for us to be able to, to continue to complain about what we don't have and what's unfair. That's not what powerful people do. And our black men, we come from a, a powerful history. And so this is time out for begging. Now it's time for us to work together, put our resources together, stop with the intangibles of who, what religion you were part of and what political this and that or whatever. We talking about some real power. Real power is tangible and I'm gonna be speaking on that today. So uh, I appreciate the people who came out today or what have you, but I'm very disappointed about the people who didn't because the very people who are not here need to be here. Mm -hmm. So they can understand what's going on. But anyway, it's a lot of powerful, but how you doing my man? You all right? Good, good. A lot of powerful brothers here today, and so right. if, if nobody else wants to uh, network to be able to uh, ensure that we secure our future, uh, the, the men who are here today will. Uh, that's what we're here for. So, <laughs> yeah. so thank you for coming, brother. And, and you know it, because when you gave me the call, I said, "Hey, <laughs> call of duty, <laughs> yeah, yeah. brother Malik in the house. Thank you. Brothers out here doing some things. He's real busy, so I'm, I'm I just wanted to get him a little a little bit of time." Um, Teriana, wait a minute, girl, you got to tell me what's going on. This young man has been behind me. We get ready to find out what he represents, who you represent down here, big player. I'm Carol Mann. I'm the president and founder of Good Fathers Only and Encourage Me. They mentor boys and support fathers. National respect, y'all. Getting ready to drop my children's book, need the support. But more importantly, when men come together, great things happen. So I just want you to know that. That's why I stopped by and checked in. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sam, what my, hey, hey, get my card. There you go. I want to hear from you so you can be on my show. See, I'm, I'm, I'm out here networking. You understand? I'm out here networking with people that, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm in the hood and I'm, 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 I'm a hood guy. You know, I know a lot of people, but it's just the fact that I need to tie into this type of situation. I need to connect with people like Malik and Chikinya and myself. And we're, we're out here broadcasting you know, she's doing her thing, running around. What's your Facebook live, Sam, man? Your Facebook uh, Sanford D. Miles. I 
I tried to pull it up. I'm gonna figure it out. Yep, Sanford D. Miles. Okay, y'all guys, come on down. You still got time. We got a lot going on. We got a lot to offer you, and it's all for you, and it's all free. Like I don't understand. We should be packed right about now. Yes, we it should. It should be standing room only. We got health care services. We have insurance for you. We have jobs for you. The gentleman just invited y'all to come to Wayne County Community College and take some classes to better yourself. I mean, I don't understand. Come on, people. You got to get it together. You have to fix you. Okay? On your own. On your own. She's absolutely right. You got to fix yourself on your own. If, if, if you continue to look for a handout, okay? And I'm going to tell you like this. In front of these cats right here, the police. I'm an ex-con. Okay? But I'm rich. I make $200,000 a year. I got the school. I got education. And I learned you can't always stick white men in meat freezers. So, five years taught me that. But the thing is, now I'm reformed. And I'm trying to let you know you have people out here fight like a man. You know, people that... I didn't even have this chance. I didn't even have these opportunities. I didn't have these lovely people that said convicted felons still welcome because it was shone upon when I got out of prison I didn't have these opportunities and I'm trying to show you so look get up off your ass come on down get the blunt out your mouth and come on down here get you a job opportunity he said you got to be legit though she's got an opportunity for you everybody down here has an opportunity for you Child support. She wants the lady from child support. Okay. Here she is right here. Uh, I'm, and if you want to, um, <clears throat> uh, because I really need to get that. Um, so why are you sending withholding orders to my child? And she immediately defended she has all the programs. I'm back here at the. That one right there. No, this one my part time. She's the child support lady. It really wasn't affecting me. It wasn't affecting my full time job. My part time job. This is the child support lady right here. And so these are all the things that you can get. You guys have followed the order. It's not even child support. There's no signature period. I need to get the part. There's some of these things that she has on on her table in which I need to do. Who? Who else? There was no other child support person down here. That was the only child support person that I have down here. Um, now, if it's somebody else, um, tell me because I, I had need to get their card. But basically, um, I don't know. Now, um, you think it was the one before her? Uh, no, that was the housing, see? That was the housing. See, and that's the child support right there. So, I don't know. Um, that's the housing department. And the other lady, she was for jobs. She was for jobs to help ex-cons. So, I don't know. It wasn't? Okay, what was it about? A job? Hold on, standby world. I'm um, about to get my wife a call so I can find out the information. Um, who, who, who are you looking at? Oh, this one right here? That lady? The... Okay, call me, call me, call me on your other phone. Call, call my phone on your other phone. And so you can see me. Okay, you talking about this lady right here? She got the ID. That's right. She got the ID. ID card of the city of Detroit. <laughs> Michigan ID. That's right. There you go. And here, this gentleman is here. Cable TV for thirty dollars. 
What? He said cable TV $30? What, you get on the pole or something? <laughs> what you, who you representing? Streaming TV. All right. And, uh... 586-244-9537. And so, um... How, the rates, how fast do you guys work? Are you better than Comcast? Or? Yes, yes. Ooh, well, I'm not going to say that we're better than Comcast. <laughs> but the rates are, but not towards, like, you know what I'm saying? But you still stream the same services? Stream stream all of the same channels, HBO Star, Cinemax. You get um, um, all of the, the channels, the own, mm -hmm. um, everything, BET, mm -hmm. NBA, League pass, NFL ticket, NHL, you get everything for $30. Somebody might get ready to get cut off. <laughs> Give us that number again. 586-244-9537. I love this brother. I, <laughs> let me get one of them Sorry, Comcast. But it is what it is. I'm out here hustling. I'm trying to get minds together. So, um, we, um, we just want to make sure. Give me a call. We um, just making sure that we down here. And um, I've been down here so far for about an hour. And uh, um, uh, basically, we're just, you know, I'm going to take a little tour around here. Let me show you all how nice it looks over here. Um, this is Wayne County Community College. In case y'all never been here before. Um, this is a college and uh, basically these are where our younger students come to um, to get their education you know i've been here on many occasions on my own um, to study when i was in school and uh you know they have a, a a big thing down here you can come down here and get apparel you know you can come down here and get your wayne county Carol. Boom. That's a nice little area. You can come down here and chill. You can, you know, get you some embroidery. And um, this is where we are. Wayne County Community College in Detroit, downtown district. Y'all come on down with your man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man. And um, I'm trying to get y'all empowered in some things, you know? Um, this is a very beautiful opportunity for you to get jobs, um, get training, get help, um, all the different things that everyone is asking for um, in life. So, all the only thing I can say is tune in with your man. The one and only Mr. Sam 44 man. I'm inviting some people right now. So if I'm looking crazy in my video shooting, I'm sorry. I'm just inviting people to the show. Because I need to see some more y'all down here. Now, some people I can't film um, because they're from Homeland Security. And... Um, even though I would like y'all to get an opportunity to uh, get yourself an opportunity to get a Homeland Security job, they don't want to be filmed. So um, I'm trying to keep it away from that. Yeah. Tell her to write the message into uh, the thing so I can ask the woman.
Oh, the one that has the uh, catering business? Okay. Okay, okay. That's who she wants. Okay. All right. It's your man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man, down here at Wayne County Community College. Um, you know, world, I do so much to try to inform you about trying to get opportunities to improve yourself or opportunities for you to have something. And when you get in here, you man, I gotta get ready to go because it's time for the panel to get on there and I'm on the panel, so I'll get back with you. You, uh, you might think this is a low number of people. I would, I would, I would think that all of them would expect more people to be here. But to me, uh, this is a great thing because yeah. it's a start of something that is about to be magnificent. Yeah. I first want to thank uh, our distinguished panelists that are here today. Each of them took their time out, uh, <coughs> and I didn't have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying to speak to, to what this is. Uh, they came out uh, because the state of the black male uh, obviously is a very important issue that no one is speaking about. Uh, today, I just want to take a little time. I'm not going to take up too much of your time this morning, but I do want to speak on the state of the black male. So I want to thank the, the uh, vendors, our volunteers, our board of directors, uh, our staff, folks who have supported Manpower Mentoring for many years. And um, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you for being here. What is the state of the black male? Uh, I was just asked that. What is that all about? I said, well, the way that you can look at the state of the black male is to look at his past, his present, and his future. A past that is evidenced by our magnificent architectural and scientific manifestations that actually, unfortunately, has been, in many cases, defaced, destroyed, lied about by so-called historians. A history of kings and queens where over 12 million Africans were taken from their land during the transatlantic slave trade and spread across this planet and put in bondage for the sake of a dollar. That history was slavery, post-slavery, Jim Crow, blanketed discrimination, police brutality, emasculation, castration. That has been the state of the black male. The present day of the black male, men of color, is that his present day situation has not been much different than his recent past. In the day he's forced to question what his future might look like. Today, we're gonna take a good look at this. Because actually our past talk and our future really has a lot of problems and issues that I could continue to go on about, but really I'm here today about some solutions. Because I've been to many of these types of activities and events, I've talked to many people and, have, and we went into many meetings, and we just never seem to get to the point of the solution. Now I'm not claiming to say that I have all the answers to that, but I say that I can touch on a couple of bases of that today. Today, the state of the black male is in a situation where he needs to take responsibility. 
Well, there's a problem that exists with taking a responsibility. Responsibility is the ability to respond. Now I'm gonna say that again. Responsibility is the ability to respond. Now how are you gonna be responsible for something you don't even have the ability to respond to? And to put that in perspective, I'll just use one example. Let's look at Libya. My brothers are over there, strung up by the ankles like turkeys, killed, maimed, for the name of slavery. And we don't have a ship, we don't have a boat, we don't have a plane or a train where we can go and assist our brothers. That inability prevents us to have from having the responsibility. Teach it. So they want to say to you, take the responsibility. Clean up your community. Raise your children. Take responsibility for all the things that's happening in your community. When unfortunately I'm watching my brothers every day as I live on the east side of Detroit who are not able to respond. They don't have the ability to do so. Some who do just refuse to do so. <laughs> but I tell brothers all the time, a man who does not know he is at war will not participate in a battle. That's right. If he does not know he's at war, he will not participate in the battle. He's not gonna to go to court and fight for his children. <laughs> he's not gonna take, take that job because he's feeling friends of the court is gonna take the money out of his check. He's not gonna go down there and try to get those arrears down and get, get a, a better payment plan. He's not gonna to go to the voting booth. He doesn't understand he's at war. He hasn't taken the time to understand that politics is not just voting. It's a year-round endeavor, a year-round engagement. To understand the electoral college and how it works, to understand lobbying, to understand the forces behind what that political power can do. And then say, hey, well, voting doesn't work, and then take, use that as an excuse not to go down there and fight. He will fight his own people instead of fighting those who are, who are harming him. That confusion is the state of the black male. Well, let me tell you how dangerous that state is for people. In this world, there are over 21 recorded extinct subgroups of human beings. Extinct. That means these subgroups of human beings don't even exist on record anymore. The average person would probably think, well, that makes sense. I mean, you know, it's just evolution. You know, the earth is old and we've been here for a long time. Au contraire. The number one reason why many of those populations of people became extinct was because of colonization. That's very important to think about. Because I'm about to make a connection for you. Nations and nationalities are ranked by their power. That's why people can say, well, America is the most powerful nation in the, United, in the world. Or well, you can make that claim. The reason why the claim is made is because it's quantifiable. Quantifiable. There are two elements of power. There is your tangible and your intangible. Follow me for a second. 
tangible power has to do with geography and territory. It has to do with the people who have the mental and physical health. It has to do with natural resources, your raw materials and food. It has to do with technology. I'm glad you're recording this because some people need to take some notes here. This is about to get deep. The intangible is, is ideology and religion, morals and values, quality of democracy, personality, those intangible elements of power. Use together the tangible and the intangible make a strong nation of a country or a people. What makes the tangible, however, so much stronger is that it is quantifiable. It is measurable. Oh, and I left one out, which was military preparedness. That is another one of those elements of tangible power. This is the problem with the state of the black male. We are divided and torn apart over the intangibles while the rest of the world is focused on the tangible. Let me take you back to the colonization and why that's important. Colonialism was one of the most devastating things that could ever happen to the human being on this planet. I'll tell you why. Because when you colonize, you displace people from their land, from their territory, from their geography. Remember, tangible. Once you take them and displace them from their land, then they don't have the natural resources, the raw materials, they don't. They don't have the, they can't grow the food, hunt on it like they need to because someone else now controls that territory. Tangible. The raw materials is how you start creating new technologies. Tangible. Then those people, because they were displaced and they don't have the food they need and they're dependent on somebody else to provide them with the food, then what happens is they start falling to disease because they're eating poison. Sound familiar? Then they become violent amongst each other because their mental health status, based on their colonization and their stress, has caused them to become violent amongst each other. Sound familiar? The other tangible was people and their mental health and physical health. Keep this, keep, keep, keep up with me. When you displace those people and they have those problems and you, they don't have their land and their geography, then at the end of the day, they don't have any military preparedness. Tangible. So now we can start talking about the solutions to all the problems of the state of the black male. And it starts with men of color Tempted to take some responsibility only towards the tangible, to really focus on the tangibles. Once we do that, we really start to understand that you really are at war. War has been waged upon you. The state of the black male is life at the conquering. That is the state of the black male. So I'm going to just give you a little bit to think about here in perspective. We keep throwing this word of white supremacy around. I think those who are educated and those who are not so educated all know that word, know that term. The problem with that term is the white part. I'll tell you why. Because it could have been black supremacy. If World War II had changed, had been turned out different, what would it have been? Japanese percent, uh, supremacy? See where I'm going with that? 
It doesn't matter who is the conqueror during that time frame. It, is the, it matters who's conquered. Those who are conquered have the responsibility to step up and get their power back. It is not up to the conqueror to give you your tools so you can reclaim your glory, for you to reclaim your life, for you to reclaim your land, for you to reclaim your dignity. It is not up to the conqueror to do that. So whether he was white, Japanese, orange, green, or black, it wouldn't matter. It would still be my job, no matter what color I am, to make sure that I regain my power. Those things that, that have, that are measurable. Or are we going to keep on squabbling around the intangibles? I'm worried about how you think your ideology is different than mine. Your religion different than mine. Come on, somebody. I think he's more moral than you are. And yeah, you know what? That preacher, he's not as moral as he should be because I, I heard him cuss. You so worried. We are so worried about the intangibles while the rest of the world is worried about the tangibles. We don't even have no land to stand on. And I'm going to end it with this. Because this is where the perception of who we are and what we are has to be questioned. We have to question ourselves sometimes. And if you've ever been, if you ever facilitated or attended a NA or an AA meeting, the first thing they tell you is what? What's the first rule? To admit the problem. You can't start doing anything unless you admit the problem. So we admit the problem that we are a conquered people. We accept that. But we also have to admit that we have a responsibility to regain our power. And we're not going to do that by begging. We're not going to get that by begging. You're not going to get a tender ear by complaining. How compassionate do you think this president will be? Mm. So stop complaining. So I invited some folk here today to, you know, and we have some questions for them, and we're going to talk about it, uh, about some things. But let me end this with the answers um, to some of the problems. When the banks discriminate against us, where we cannot own properties and get the loans and things of that nature to get our land and buildings, then we need to find an alternative. So today we got workshops on land contracting. Why? Because we need to know the legalities of it so we'll understand how they work. Most commercial properties are bought on land contract. It's just most residents don't understand how they work. But to be renting, and most people in this city are renting to landlords who are sending money across the, not out of the city, out of the country. How American is that? But we suffer in this city because of that. When the credit reporting agencies, the employers, and the creditors mark you as unworthy, you need to learn how to fix your credit, how to build your wealth. So you can participate. So we can participate in this commerce. So we can have the assets that we need to be able to regain our land and our property and our dignity. Today we also have a workshop on social resilience. Because we need to learn how to control ourselves emotionally and start healing ourselves mentally so that we won't have so much internal violence. We, don't, we, we need to fight the urge to have this, this self-hate. So I ended with this, that uh, those who are in power, who are the conquerors, they will not, they're not intending to give up that power. Wow. So you can get it out your mind. And they'll do anything to protect it. The state of the black male is one where you have to understand that if you, to reclaim yours and to protect yours, you have to stay, you have to think in the same mind frame. And that's the thing, tangible. And I thank you for that time. And what we'll do, uh, we'll just take a, a short second, uh, a breather. I need it. Uh, and then we'll come back with some questions to, for the panelists. Uh, is Mr. Bird here? 
Oh, my brother right here. Okay, how you doing? All right. So, um, do you want to take it from here? Or? Okay, thank you. So we're going to take a break or what have you, and, uh, and I really appreciate your time and your attention. Peace. What's up, world? It's your man, the one only Mr. Sam 44 man. You just heard Brother Malik King. He was on it. True, 100%. And um, right now we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll be soon to hear from the panelists over here and um, get some questions and answers coming from the uh, ladies and gentlemen out there. Um, what I'm about to do now is um, I'm a... Um, Talk to the gentlemen while they're up here. How you doing, Sanford Miles, Detroit Raw Live? How you doing today? Joe Farley, Friends and Fathers. How are you? Pretty Tell us what you're representing. I'm actually representing um, Friends and Fathers, educating and coaching fathers on how to navigate through the child support system, mm -hmm. so therefore they can represent themselves back in the family structure. Okay. Because they have been ostracized from first for not participating mm -hmm. or knowing how to participate. Mm -hmm. And actually, because of those resources the keynote speaker just spoke of, uh, money, um, uh, our voice in the family structure. So I'm going to be talking about how you can actually go through and position yourself to address those creating fears that's happened in the community about child support. So well, see, that's what we need. That's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. So y'all make sure y'all stand by with your man. Thank you very much. Sanford Miles, Detroit Raw Live. How you doing? Uh, my name is Jalen Harris. And what are you representing? I'm representing the youth of the city of Detroit. Uh, basically, what I try to do is actually find different resources for Detroit youth to get involved in activities, jobs, uh, mentoring other youth in the city of Detroit. It's, our, it's my privilege to be representing the youth to try to help them to engage, not only have the uh, ability to communicate, to, mini to communicate and to empower um, kids before them. Yeah. Well, that's that's a wonderful thing. I appreciate that, brother. He, he, you see what he's doing? Wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. We need that out here. And we're going to move on down the line. <laughs> Mr. Sam, 44 Man, Detroit Raw Live. Bill Cass. How are you? Bill I'm Cass. Great. Are you representing? Well, I'm representing the, the people of this community and the people of the state okay. to, to address the most important issue that we have in our community, and that's the alleviation of poverty mm. and the underlying causes of that poverty, so that we have the same opportunity as everybody else in this state to have a good life. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And that's why we're down here. And I don't know why you're not down here. And if you're not down here, you need to be down here. You're not doing nothing today. Today is Saturday. Get the blunt out your mouth and come on down here and get you some real knowledge on going, what's going on down here in the city of Detroit, down here at Wayne County Community College. We got this young man. He's looking already like, hey. All right. All right. Mr. Sam, 44 man, how you doing? Good. I'm John Crowley. There you go. John Cuomo, I'm a uh, recent candidate for state representative in District 3. Uh, I ran on second chance legislation uh, with the hopes to win and amend the expungement law in Michigan uh, to get serious about giving people second chances. Uh, there's so many uh, politicians today talking about a prison reform, and my question to them is, if you're going to have prison reform, you're going to have to have some former prisoners around the table so you understand what you're reforming. Me. Uh, and I'm one of those people, so. And I am too. Well, <laughs> so uh, you I know, we thank know. Everybody that voted for me this past Tuesday, uh, this is our chance to grow, and we're not going to lose our chance. We're going to keep on fighting, and we're going to keep letting every convicted felon know that you have the right to vote in Michigan. I don't care if you violated a criminal law as a state violation, as a federal crime, you do not lose your rights to vote in Michigan. The only time that you cannot vote in Michigan is if you're in jail or in prison on election day. But if you bond out of jail or prison, get out of prison on election day, you can go straight to the election polls and vote. It is your responsibility. And if you did time, you should be the first person in line to vote. Thank you. 
Okay, yes, the man right there. Ooh, we're getting ready to have two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes, ladies and gentlemen. These stairs gonna kill me. Two minutes, uh, we're gonna go right back to uh, the program. So everybody is still doing their thing. And um, as I said before, we're down here, Wayne County Community College, downtown campus. You need to get down here, you know. We got the gentlemen here that are sitting back, giving the knowledge, helping to empower the communication. And so therefore, we are just basically, um, we got Councilman James Tate, He's sitting back kicking it. My brother, yes, what are you sir. representing? What's sir, your name? My name is Hakeem Crampton. I'm the director of Amen for Youth, the Academic Mentoring Education Network. And uh, my goal primarily is to reach our youth and, and get them to actively involved in, in their own reformation. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That's been a, a serious problem to me. My own young youth childhood, I got swept into the juvenile justice system. And, and I've never gotten out. I'm 45 years old. I've been in the system you. since 1985. <laughs> I know. And, uh, so but it was fighting to get our young men out of the system and off that pipeline to incarceration. And um, like you say, it, it, it's so difficult because, like I said, I, I was in the 80s too. And, uh, and they won't let me forget it. And I was two years old. And what, 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 I was like, I was still have done that crime. I'm it's still in the system. I'm on parole. Right. I've been on parole for 12 years. <laughs> I've been on parole for 30. <laughs> so you see, it's just, you still have that stigmatization over your head. You still have that rainy cloud. But we appreciate this brother being out here because we, we, we're going to get to stand by. Just stand by. We're going to get back on the air. We're waiting on the people to come back on the panel. You're tuned into the Detroit Raw Show, one of the hottest shows seen around the world with your man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 Man. Let's get ready to get the show together. I think we're ready to start. First, uh, first of all, we want to thank all of you guys for coming, all of the, the mothers and the fathers, and the children, the sisters and brothers. We want to thank you for coming out. Give yourselves a hand. All right, I want to first off introduce myself. My name is Anthony Bird. I want to honor my mother who was able to join us this morning. And we want to start to my left, and we want all the panelists to just give us a, a brief 30 second snapshot of, of who you are and what you do. And, and first of all, I want to thank you all for your impact to our community. Thank you for having me. My name is uh, Joseph Farley, uh, founder and president of Friends of Fathers. Uh, can you hear from the mic? Can we hear you? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, again, my name is Joe Farley, Friends of Fathers uh, is an organization that I represent where we educate and um, coach fathers on how to navigate through the, ch the friend of the court process, but most, most importantly, we help them in reference to being back in the family structure through that system as well as through our society. Hello, my name is Jalen Harris, uh, recently graduated from Martin Luther King High School. Um, I represent the youth inside the city of Detroit. I'm a community activist, and basically what I do is to empower the youth by different opportunities and activities for Detroit youth to participate in. There's not much in the city for the youth to do, so I will try my best to find different activities for them. Good morning, my name is Baba Sankofa. I am a lecturer, researcher, historian. I'm also an educator. I've been in education for 19 years. Uh, I grew up in Detroit City. I'm a male mentor. I coach and teach martial arts to youth, male and female. Um, my passion is for my people. Um, and I thank all of you for coming out. Good morning. I'm Bill Cobbs, former candidate for governor, state of Michigan. Uh, former president and chairman of 100 Black Men of Greater Detroit. Uh, I'm here because I, I, I recognize that we've got to level the playing field and get my people from being at the bottom of the totem pole. You know, we've got to make sure that opportunity in the state embraces all of us, not just those that live in certain zip codes. Hi, uh, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is John Cromer. I'm a former candidate uh, for state representative in District 3. 
I'm also a returning citizen. I served 13 years in prison uh, for stealing a pair of gym shoes and a set of, of bed sheets. Uh, since I've been home from prison, I put thousands of people to work. I spearheaded the Band of Box Ordinance for the city of Detroit, and I continue to work every single day to knock down barriers to employment and self-sufficiency for our hard to serve populations. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am James Tate, member of Detroit City Council. I am a third term uh, right now. Uh, I represent District 1, and that is the far northwest side of the city of Detroit. Uh, I am here today because uh, it is my responsibility to do everything I can to try to improve. I feel not just for the residents of the city of Detroit, their quality of life, but certainly for uh, black folks, and especially black men and boys. Uh, I've been blessed in this life with a lot of things growing up, and um, it is an obligation to do everything we can uh, to help those who are coming behind us in any way that we can. And that's part of the reason why I'm here today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hakeem Crampton. I'm the founding director of Amen for Youth, the Academic Mentoring and Education Network. I'm a lyrical educator. I teach a hip-hop-based pedagogy to youth in schools throughout the state of Michigan. I'm also a steering committee founding member of Nation Outside, an organization of formerly incarcerated men and women working to uh, help with the reintegration and successful reintegration of men and women back into society. Um, I'm, I'm very proud to be here to be a part of this panel. Um, this is about my seventh panel of participation in a, a black male leadership. In my first panel, I participated from prison I'm in the year 1999. Um, I served 15 years in prison for a wrongful murder conviction out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was wrongly convicted, sentenced to life in prison. I was fortunate to be able to receive my freedom in 2006 with the help of the Wisconsin Innocence Project. Unfortunately, however, I still remain on parole for that wrongful conviction. I've been on parole 12 years, and so my fight is to help our children navigate themselves away from the criminal justice system. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Otis Bellinger, I'm a community servant, director and founder of the Building Better Men program for young males ages 8 to 18. Founded the program in 1991. We believe that early funeral home processions and prisons are not for our black males. Colleges, trade, skilled trade schools, and entrepreneurship for our black males. And uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but I'll let you know here. Beginning in uh, July 2019, we will be breaking ground for two all-male academies, one in Detroit and one in Toledo. Thank you. All right. All right. Give them all a hand. All right. Now, we got some, we got some questions that we're going to ask, and they were generated by the people. Um, I do have some questions that I would put on here. But just in case a few of these ruffles and feathers, I'll take full responsibility. How does that sound? All right. All right. So to get right into it, um, has the role of the church in retrospect played a beneficial or harmful role in our progression? Which one of our panelists would like to handle that? I can pick somebody. The church, you said? Actually, could you repeat your question? Yes. No, no problem. Uh, the question is about the role of the church in the community. Has the role of the church in retrospect played a beneficial or harmful role in our progression? I think it's been beneficial. And it's been beneficial in a way because it gives us a voice, it gives us an opportunity, it gives us access. Uh, even, even politicians go to church or go to temple or worship. And we be able to uh, incorporate that and have uh, those people represent us and be able to knock down, help us knock down barriers and make uh, progressive uh, steps in our communities. I think the church is very effective in that way. And there are some churches that, that, are, that wish to do more, but they don't have the resources to do it. But there, then there are churches that are the main resource to our communities. And we really appreciate some of the larger churches that do give back and, and have protests and have marches and have uh, sit-ins and have all of these things that make us move forward as the people. Um, in reference to the church, I believe, yes, it has been a help. Um, but one thing that I, I do believe in reference to spiritual um, relationship with your higher power um, is that you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. And it's the church that has an organization that helps you learn about your religious development. But 
the churches are there, and just like any other government body, it depends upon the people taking the responsibility to make sure that what that organization is supposed to do and make them accountable for it. But we are responsible for it. You know, as the moderator to create balance in the question, has the role of the mosque in retrospect played a beneficial or harmful role in our progression? Anyone? Um, can I go back and speak to the first question? Um, will you speak to the first and the second? Or just the first? I can speak to both of them. Absolutely. The church used to, the church now is complacent in our community. At one time, the church was the cornerstone of our community, and we could agitate from the pulpit to solve our problems. The church represented us well. Going back to the 1800s, there were revolutionary preachers and pastors like uh, Richard Allen, Absalom Jones, Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, who lectured from the Georgia State Legislature during Reconstruction and condemned the United States of America for human rights abuses against black people. The church was very powerful. Even back in the 60s with Adam Clayton Powell Jr. in New York, him being a congressman and things he accomplished as being a congressman, but he agitated from the pulpit, from the church. The church now in our communities are too complacent. Just here in Detroit, we have over 3,000 3, churches, but we have no businesses. We have no control over our communities. People, the merchants come from the outside. The churches take money every Sunday, but they are not producing. They are not benefiting the people, and this is a big problem. The mosque is, is, is another um, a religious edifice that is in our community. The mosque do very, very well with promoting black nationalism, but it too, takes from our community and don't respond by putting things that's necessary, that's vital for the people in the community to live. For instance, during the 60s, you had like a Shrine of Black Madonna, Ralph, uh, Reverend Clegg, a, a baby Ajuma. He had farms, he had stores, bookstores to raise the consciousness of the people. The mosques during the 60s and 70s had delicatessens, dry cleaning services. They had all kinds of businesses that gave back to the community. These things no longer exist. In fact, the church has become counter-revolutionary with the faith-based initiative instituted under George Bush in the early 2000s. Right. We have problems. And uh, unfortunately, there are good pastors, good preachers, good imams, good ministers, but there are not enough of them. The majority are on the take. Well. I, I just want to I just want to sit here and, and I want to defend my church, uh, my church, Hartford Memorial Baptist Church on Seven Mile and James Cousin is very present in our community. In fact, our our church uh, does give back and does promote businesses. If you look at the Subway, the w Wendy's, and all of those, they look at the Myers uh, on Seven Mile. And, 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 and uh, Seven Mile and Myers, the uh, uh, Home Depot, that's something that our church was very progressive and very involved in to make happen. If you look at everything on Seven Mile between Hubble and Griggs on both sides of Seven Mile, you can contribute that to Hartford Memorial Baptist Church. Pastor Adams. Pastor Dr. Dr. Charles Gilcrest Adams and his son, Pastor Christian Adams. That's poignant, though. We all love Dr. Adams and the community, right? Well, uh, since 1991, been in uh, serving young black males ages 8 to 18, and what I can say is that um, what I'm often asked, what is the one uh, strategy or uh, what you have seen in these young black men that have had them go from negative to positive, and I would always say two things. One is that I have not seen one young man uh, decide to change his life without the influence of Jesus Christ. I just haven't seen it. Amen. And uh, although I'm not a Muslim, uh, and my brother is, and part of my family is, I've seen where those who choose to uh, be in that religion have helped also. But I have also seen where I've taken young men to some of the mega churches. And um, I'm not being judgmental, I'm just telling you my experience. And they were not wealthy. But after that young man was killed and he died, and it was a high profile media uh, murder, then the pastor called me and says, we will do his funeral here for free because of the media attention. 
and I'm not a friend of some of the pastors. And I said, well, sir, well, pastor, fill in the blank. What about the time that I came to you when the young man was living and you did not open your door? So now that he is dead, you want to host his funeral. Uh, some of the politicians. Why is it when I came to you when he was living? Now you want to speak at his funeral. So as black people, we have to be proactive and not reactive because whatever your philosophy is or when they die, they go to heaven or hell, you can't help that young man when he's in that casket. So I think that we have to be more proactive than reactive. All right, wonderful. We have a good, good church question. We'd like to thank everybody who stepped in on that. We're going to flip it to the state side. Um, Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cromer, yes. Cromer and Councilman Tate. Um, this question will be for you guys. I want to start with the, the candidates, and then I want to end with the, um, the actual city elected um, politician. That is best for you guys. Is voting a realistic tool necessary in empowering African Americans? Why or why not? Let's start with Mr. Cobb. Oh, sure. So the question is, is voting a realistic tool? Absolutely. See, here's the thing that we don't understand. As, as black folks, we have got to stop asking for help and start demanding opportunity. You know, you can't have real economic power if you don't exert your political power. Now, we, we are blindly connected to the Democratic Party. And I, I continue to ask folks, what have we gotten back for that? We give our undivided loyalty to this party in every single election period. We have people come into our community, ask us for our votes. We give them and get nothing in return for it. Amen. We're doing that very same thing right now. See, here's what the Democrats understand that we don't understand. In Michigan, we have a state that has a population of almost 10 million people. But there are six counties in this state that determine whether a Democrat can win a statewide election. Those six counties are Genesee, Macomb, Wayne, Washtenaw, Oakland, and Lenaway. Those counties have almost half of the state's entire population. African Americans compose 17% of the population of this state. 80% of us live in those six counties. So you've seen all of the Democrats that were running for governor show a lot of attention to those six counties because they know they can't win without you. But we have not demanded a thing of those people. And once again, we're going with our hats in our hands to support people who do nothing for us. We have fundamentally got to recognize that, that until we come together and are prepared to use our political power to get exactly what we want like everybody else does, we will continue to be at the bottom of the political totem pole. Mr. Cobb, thank you very much. Mr. Cromer. Okay, um, let me say this. Uh, you're talking about voting. Um, in prison, uh, they have a policy, something called prisoner representative. And the prisoner representative sits on the warden's forum. The warden's forum is comprised of uh, the warden, the deputy warden, and two inmates from each unit that represent the prisoners. And in prison, prisoners find it very important to, rep to vote for or to elect the most capable prisoner to represent us to the warden so that we can get the things that we need uh, to survive and to live comfortably in prison. You understand, they want representation. They vote. We have an election. They put prisoners on a ballot and pass it out to the other prisoners to vote for the most capable prisoner to represent us. So if you're in prison and you're voting because you understand that you need representation to get the things that you need, why is it that you lose concept of that or knowledge of that when you're out of prison? You must vote in order to get the things that you need. If you look at other communities that have lower car insurance, that have quicker police responses, that have all the things that we yearn for in this city, they have those things because there are high numbers of voting turnout. They vote. 
they go and get the most capable people to get the things done for their community. Now, you want prison reform? You want people to stop jacking around on you about your criminal history? Then get somebody that's been there, that's done that, to represent you in Lansing to help knock down those barriers to employment and self-sufficiency. Thank you, Mr. Cronin. We appreciate that. Councilman Taylor. Yeah, so voting is a major, major tool that we do not use uh, to help transform mm -hmm. our community. Uh, and I say that based upon the fact of just the knowledge. I mean, we can say go out and vote, but we're not necessarily even always clear about what we're voting for. Um, I can just go back and look at our election. I'll say even me as a, can a candidate in my first election for city council. So my first election for city council, a lot of folks didn't know me. I didn't have a lot of money, didn't raise a lot. Um, but I was on television as a second deputy chief at the uh, Detroit Police Department. And I had people who voted for me simply because I was on TV a lot. Didn't know anything about my political philosophy or anything like that, so I would be sitting up here and lying to you if I said that me being on television as a spokesperson didn't help me get into uh, being in politics. Now the question is, what do you do when you get into that position? So the voters have a responsibility once you have someone who you've hired and put in that position to now hold them accountable. So regardless of if it's four years or two years between the next election, the question is unity and unification and then understanding the information. So in my office, it's always engage, inform, unite, empower. All right. And I study those things because if there are things that we're doing in our office that don't touch those areas, then all we're doing is things for show. We didn't say do it the loudest. We didn't say make sure that everybody knows about it, but engage, inform, unite, empower. Once you do that, if we empower the people, now they'll hold me more accountable for the things that I do. So uh, I think voting is a tool that has been shown around the country works, but we have to use it uh, to uh, improve our community as well. Thank you very much. And while I have you, um, based off your, your previous, and we all knew about his previous experience in DPD, and we appreciate his service, um, there's a question here. Can we effectively stop the killings of our brothers by law enforcement and angry whites without violence? When we say can we effectively stop, I don't, I'm, I'm always challenged when I say can we stop something, because that's absolute. That means there'll never be any more. That means that that takes out the element of humans, because when you take out the element, when you add humans to anything, uh, we'll mess stuff up. And so that means that there'll always be a chance for something not to go correctly and properly. So I was not a sworn member of the Detroit Police Department. I tell people this all the time. I was a civilian member, so I was second deputy chief. So whenever you have a number in front of your title, that means that you're a civilian. So I was uh, I give all homage to those individuals. We have some folks in the back of the room who are sworn members. We want to give them a round of applause. Give it up to them. Now, there are issues that we have in our community that we have to deal with when we start talking about the killing of black men, whether we talk about law enforcement, certainly, or those individuals within our community, until we really focus on the issue and not incidents, then it will not change. And so we'll get excited about an incident and get upset about an incident, and if someone is charged or not charged, we all go back to sleep again. But we have to bring this up and make sure that this is, when we have these elections that are coming up right now, this is how we hold elected officials or those candidates who are running for office accountable. Right. These are the issues that are important to us. It's not just about, are you going to fix the roads? It's not just about, which is very important, education as well, but it's also about what are you going to do in your capacity of a, as an elected official to help address this particular issue? Is it policy-wise? Is it from a bully pulpit-wise? But what are you going to do to address those issues? So we can begin to have an immediate impact right now in the state of Michigan on uh, police misconduct. You know, last year when the trooper that was responsible for that 15-year-old's death uh, committed the act that he did, that guy should never have been on the job. When you have an officer who has 40 incidents of use of force, in four years, that means you have almost one a month, there's something wrong with the process. So what we can do in the state of Michigan is use some common sense. I've said that 
The first thing that needs to happen is that Lansing has got to institute a police licensing process, just like we do for lawyers, like we do for doctors, like we do for accountants, so that when you have your license revoked, you don't get to go from one community to another, to another, to another, and, and commit the same kind of offenses. If we create a state law in this state that says that if you've been found guilty of violating a citizen's rights and you've lost your employment, that you are no longer eligible to be a police officer in the state of Michigan, that's a big first step to making sure that we take those people who are intent on brutalizing citizens that look like us and come from where we come from off of the job. As a youth perspective uh, on police brutalities, when you say angry whites, we have to look at both sides, angry whites, angry blacks. You know, we rally about when a white person kills our black males, but we don't rally when black males kill each other. That's right. You know, I argue with my peers all the time. You can't say, you know, I don't mean to be offensive, but you can't say black lives matter if you not, if you, you can't say black lives matter if you still out here killing your own kind. You can't say that. Until we stop killing our own people, people of color, we can't say black lives matter. But it's up to you to say it if you want to. You know, boy was killed, he was 17 in Philadelphia uh, by police. Now, the car that him and his friend was in was uh, called in because they had seen it in a uh, recent crime where they got pulled over. These two black males decided they wanted to run out the car. Now again, I know every parent in this room, you know, it's like, you know, you guys teach your kids to, you know, always obey by the rules, you know. Even if you have seen many kids out here getting killed, you have always told, you know, if police pull you over, don't try and run. Be straight with them. But these two teens decided to run because they had a gun inside the car. With that incident, one boy got killed. Now, we look at that and say, this guy, the officer that killed him was only on the job for a couple hours. He was white, yes. But at the same time, we have to look at both sides. He ran, the guy, the officer didn't have to use the gun. He did, he could use the taser. He could have ran after him, but he decided to shoot him. In Detroit, you know, police officers get trained for free. They already paid. Many officers come here to the city of Detroit uh, and get the training, and they don't leave after a year or two to go somewhere because of the pay. The city of uh, Detroit is not paying officers well enough to keep them here on the job. What they're saying is that, you know, we need more adults out here to represent the youth, to lead them, to direct them down the, into the right path. It starts with the parents, it starts at the homes, and it starts with the children. Thank you. I think we fail to address the, the problem, and we fail to address the problem for centuries. The problem is the system, the institution itself, the government apparatus, white supremacy rules unchallenged. Uh, the political system is, is, is butt rest by white supremacy, the academic system, the uh, economic system, and the religious system. All institutions in the United States of America are reinforced by white supremacy. They've been killing us since they brought our ancestors here. They've experimented with our women uh, during the times of enslavement for medical purposes. They use our children as alligator bait to, you know, to get alligators. They've killed us, they've lynched us. They've been doing this since they brought our ancestors here. The problem is that we always try to amalgamate or assimilate into the system instead of cha changing our relationship with the power structure. We're talking about voting, right? The previous question. Jews only about three or four percent of the population, but they control the GOP and over six percent of the Democratic Party. Each president that's the person that's running for the office of presidency, they go over to Israel and they kiss the wall. 
Every single one. Obama, Clinton, Bush, Trump, every single one. But we never confront Zionism, which has been our greatest enemy since we've been on this side of the water. Uh, European Zionism and Christian Zionism has been a big problem for us. In the schools, in the political arena, everywhere you find us, Zionism checks us. But we don't check it. We don't address it. So we have to change our relationship to the power structure in order for them to treat us differently. Until we do that, things will continue the way it is. If you want fundamental change, that comes from the grassroots. Anything else, electing officials and people to the, to, to the political system, that's going to cause maybe some reform, but not change. We have to be about dismantling the system. We have to change. No one runs for presidency because they want to change the poverty in America or to prevent uh, crime or to change things on a grassroots level or make the country better for everyone. People run to continue power, period. To expand power, to maintain the power that exists. They don't run to change things. And this is a bad, this, this is a sad reality, but we must wake up. We have to change our relationship to the power structure if we wanted to change its relationship to us. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your We'll be getting into questions in maybe the next 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, Brother Akeem, I have a question for you. Our young males do not see school as an adequate tool or avenue toward freedom. Should we seek alternative or educational methods? And also, what can we do to change their perception of school and education? That's a very great question. Phenomenal question, thank you. I want to preface that, um, my answer, by saying, when you get a chance, go on YouTube. There's a video called Akeem Crampton at Osborne High School. I want you to go play this video for your children, for your families, and for your communities. It's a very, very important message to our young black males and our young black females in school. Yes, we should be seeking alternative means of education. I'm going to tell you why. It was created for one purpose, and I think most of us don't understand it, even our today educators. That purpose was to integrate European migrants into America, into America's social life, right? That's the reason public schools was created. That's the sole purpose, was to integrate European immigrants into this country so they would understand how America operated, its systems function, its civil, its civics function. So today, we're trying to integrate our children into an educational system that is inherently designed to exclude us from that educational paradigm. Our history is not included in there. So when I walk in the classroom today, today in 2018, I ask children who is Nelson Mandela, our children don't know who he is. Mm. Our children do not know some of the most basic, fundamental, historical knowledge bases that we all know as adults, or many of us should know. That prevents our children from being able to recognize their great historical power, their great historical legacy. They are prevented from having the ability to respond to their current crisis because they don't see any value in themselves. They don't see any historical legacy coming from them. Slavery is not a historical legacy that we should be teaching our children. Instead, we should be developing alternative schools, alternative curriculums that get right to the heart and cause of who we are as a people internationally, globally, from the diaspora around this world. So as I work with children in our schools today, and I work for the Student Advocacy Center based out of Washington, Arkansas, it's one of the jobs I have, fortunately, blessed to be a fellow and have a job. One of the things that I do is we run a program called Check and Connect. And this program is designed to put a mentor with a child, to check in and connect with that child every single day. That is what we've been missing because of course, and I'm sure this question will come to the forefront about the absence of fathers, we have a severe absence in the lives of our children of appropriate role models in their lives, fathers specifically. And we have to be able to check in and connect with our children in the educational paradigm because the educational paradigm is failing our children. Instead of our children succeeding through the educational system, they are being led on a pipeline straight to incarceration. One of the things that, that we have got to recognize is that public education in Michigan is, is really a two-tier system. One for the haves and one for the have-nots. You know, proposal A which was enacted as one of Engler's grand experiments, created an educational system that was supposed to provide a, a, a level playing field in terms of the way we funded education, except that it didn't. You know, if you look at 
kids in Detroit where we spend about $8,000 a year on their education. And you compare that with children that live in Rochester, who live in Bloomfield Hills, who live in Farmington Hills, where they have, in many instances, twice as much to educate those children. You can't say that we're going to deliver the same kind of educational outcomes if we aren't willing to provide the same level of resources to those kids' education. So young people get frustrated because they're forced into educational environments that are absolutely not conducive to them learning. And we blame them and we blame the teachers. It's not their fault. It's our fault, our fault, for not demanding more. You know, we got to stop asking for help and start demanding opportunity. You know, you, if you go in Detroit and you look at the best schools that we have, that would be Cass Tech. That would be uh, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. You look at those schools, and then you go out to Bloomfield Hills, and you look at Bloomfield Hills High School, you would be shocked at the differential between that community, schools, and out. We can't expect that our kids are going to embrace that educational experience if we aren't giving them the same kind of opportunity to learn as those other kids get. That's reality. Well, uh, I was speaking to a group of principals uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was asked a question. It's college for everyone. And I do believe that college is for everyone, but you got different type of learners. And I know some young men that affiliated with the Building Better Man program, uh, they just said, Bellinger, well, school is not for me. Now, I could have beat it down their throats, but then I asked them, I'll tell you what, what is something that you like, a passion? What about a skilled trades? where that you can make an honest living and not be a part of the criminal justice system. So, so when you say alternative education, uh, as long as you are out here doing something legal, helping the community, helping your family, listen, that's what we teach. All right. I'm Benny, I've, been, I've been in education for 19 years. I'm an educator now. I work with the Oak Park School District. We have to, um, I think, change the way, what, how we educate our children, what we want for them, what we expect from them. When I was young, I grew up on Magnolia, the east side of Detroit. I was told that I should go to school to get an education in order to get a job. There are no jobs. I agree with the brother. What we need to do is to give our children tools necessary so they can solve their problems, our problems. And skilled trades is one of the ways of doing that. We need electricians, we need carpenters, we need pipe fitters, plumbers. We need everything across the board. At my job, there was a, a, a building maintenance specialist there. He's working with a boiler. He said he couldn't get enough candidates for the apprenticeship program. Young brothers are not trying to uh, learn uh, uh, skilled trades, are not uh, participating. They can't keep people. He said he had to extend his, his time for retirement because there was no one coming behind him to work, to take up the mantle, to continue to work, doing work. This is what we need to push. Understand that, again, the fundamental problem is the system itself. We send our children to be educated in a system that's oppressive. I'm going to end by saying this. Again, I've been in education for 19 years. If we want control of our children, if we want a better future for our children, we really have to make sacrifices and possibly not even send them to school. We must homeschool, do alternative forms of education, because sending them into the traditional public school, the only thing they're going to become are con consumers and workers for the capitalist system. That's it and that's all. They'll never have any power seeking jobs and work for other folks. We need to build up our neighborhoods because we don't have communities. We don't own and control the economics in our communities. We go outside of our neighborhoods for jobs. We go to other communities for jobs. We have to project, provide jobs for ourselves. One of those ways is to do a skilled trade. Well, I want to say that uh, 
first of all, I, don't let your young men and women lay in bed on Sunday morning. Get them up and take them to church. Take them someplace. Take, bring them downtown to the science fair or something. Let them see the world. Uh, one of the things that our children need are exposure. They need to come out of their environment. Uh, because we have some mentors that are inappropriate and ruin their training programs because of their own misbehavior, it's hard to be a mentor sometimes. I'm a mentor. I mentor young men and women that are 14 to 26 years old. But about three years ago, I got a call from a mother who begged me to help her because she has seven children, and most of them are boys, and she cannot handle them because her, and she don't know where the daddy is. So I began to lower my requirements for nine to 29. You have to be very careful when you're mentoring these young people. You have to make sure that you have a relationship with their parents, that they understand that you have a conducive relation, a goal to raise this child in the right fashion. And I teach my young men and women that the more you learn, the more you can do. And the more you can do, the more money you can demand for your service. So it means it, school is very important. And that's what I teach my young men and women, that if you don't have education, you don't have anything. There are like, what's very frightening to me is that I've attended some graduations recently this past summer, and both charter and public school graduation. And these kids are graduating and they can't read. And they can't write. They can't spell. It's very frightening. And I understand that we have to, we have to grab onto them and make an impact that will save our community. You young, you men and women have gone through hell in your life. It is your responsibility to grab onto these young people and give them a sense of direction that keeps them out of trouble in the first place. And therefore, you all have people like me that are fighting every single day, losing my voice, arguing for second chances. How dare us expect for people to stay out of trouble without a job? Do you understand that our criminal justice system it needs to be reformed. The only way you're going to reform our criminal justice system is to give it hope. Hope is taken away from our criminal justice system. They, they, they bribe us to plead guilty to charges so they can get the case out of the way and move to the next one. And then they tell us with the expungement law, for instance, that you can have only one felony or only two misdemeanors to go back to your judge and ask your judge to seal your record so you can get a job. So you can get that apartment. So you can live this American dream. But they allow the police and the prosecutor to throw a book at your children on one case, more than one felony, multiple charges for one case. It takes away hope at the door. There is no chance for transformation. There is no chance for a second chance. When you're telling my son that he can only have one felony in order to get his record clean, but you're going to let the prosecutor give him four felonies for one case? <laughs> we need to change the expansion law if we want to get serious about giving people second chances. The truth is, every our kids are not going to college. Not every one of our kids are going to college. About eight years ago, I partnered with Walmart. And Walmart and I went into, you remember Robert Bob? You guys remember Robert Bob, don't you? Well, Robert Bob allowed me and some of my, in Walmart, to come in four high schools. And we went into Western, uh, the DIA, Henry Ford, and also uh, 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 the boys' school, uh, 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 Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Douglass Academy. And we were able to place about 200 young people at Walmart for the summer. And don't you know I was challenged by an organization called By Any Means Necessary? They had the audacity to take me on Friends Network on the national uh, TV to challenge me, saying that I'm getting our kids ready for Burger King and McDonald's and Walmart. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that's where they're going. Walmart, Burger King, and McDonald's are the introduction to the workforce. You have to learn how to work, and they will teach you how to work because our kids, not all of our kids are going to college, but they need a job. So we got some mothers in the audience, I guess. Yes, thank you for the work. We have our last two panelists real quick. I want to acknowledge them. We need our last two panelists, Ms. Ms. John and Mr. Shabazz. If you guys can come stage right for me, right here, please. And we have a question on the way for our discussion. And Mr. Shabazz, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Skill trades. I went to Gold Island with Tech. Uh, 
and uh, culinary arts. It's not that kids don't want to do it, it's that the system gets certain schools the opportunity to go to these uh, centers. Uh, King, Cass, Renaissance, Denby, Osborne, East English Village are the ones that I know so far that comes to these career tech centers and actually get the opportunities to uh, you know, get the training they need. As I know that, you know, it's up to the principals to uh, allow the kids to go. Many of the kids from CAS didn't know that they can go to uh, to these career techs. It's all about the money. You know, CAS have the opportunity to go to uh, go White League or to these other career tip centers, but the principal said they couldn't. Because in order for these kids to go to these career techs, you know, the money goes with them. That student is attending two, two schools, not one, but two. So wherever they go, that money goes. That money goes to that school. So the kids at CAS say, we don't have career tech. And I'm like, you have career tech. You have to. And like, no, our principal said we don't. Come to find out they did, but the principal wasn't allowing them to go because of that money issue. You know, I battle with, teach, with principals all the time about, you know, giving us the right resources that we need. And, you know, we had a national school walkout day, March 20th. I had organized seven schools to Spirit of Detroit. And this principal, I won't say her name, but wouldn't allow me to walk from King all the way to Spirit of Detroit with my fellow peers. This had made me so angry, but I did it in a proper way. I got the super team involved, and now we got her boss that you said that this was not this was not approved by the super team for us to go to the Spirit of Detroit to march for gun violence, to make sure that we don't allow teachers that have guns inside the teaching area. We shouldn't be inside a classroom watching a teacher with a gun on her hip. We should be there. We should be there to be in our education. We should be there to learn and everything. And so recently, they just came on the news that they are not allowing teachers or anybody to come inside the schools with guns. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for Jalen. Are you a student? We have um, two questions we want to pose to you. Um, our, our last two panelists, last but not least, um, one about mental health, and then we're going to have Minister McBath close it out um, about slavery. It wasn't a choice or not. So we're going to start with post traumatic stress and other mental issues appear to impact the African American community. Since there has been limited or no diagnosis for what slavery, Jim Crow, and other legislative practices cause, how do we begin to treat and heal our people? Uh, that's a big question, so I'm going to answer it sort of small a little bit. Um, I think the first step is to be more open about mental health in general. I feel like in my career, what I found is that when a client has talked to me, it I was the first person they talked to about certain traumatic experiences or at all in a while. And then you gotta give you the stigma of seeing a mental health professional. So I think in order to combat the traumatic experiences from our history, we have to first look at our personal traumatic history. We have to be able to say, I'm going through depression. I've gone through this experience and it has affected me. It doesn't make me weak. It doesn't make me less than someone else because I have because I have and need a therapist or because I have and need psychotropic medication. Um, so yeah, I would say first just acknowledging the importance of mental health, acknowledging the importance of therapy, of coping skills, of combating stigma because it does get stigmatized or it, it just doesn't get talked about. Um, we're told to do alternative things that sort of push it under the rug instead of actually addressing it. And you can't start to heal anything. You can't start to 
change anything until you first acknowledge that this thing is happening or has happened to you and how it affects your daily life. Well, slavery a choice, it is our current situation, our choice, and elaborate on your answer. Give the name of the gun. Wow. What a question. <laughs> Was slavery a choice? That's the question. Give me the Kanye question. Huh? Right. <laughs> in my mind is like a rose. It's also like a woman, a black woman, a Nubian woman. It is simple and it's complex at the same time. Uh, everything in life is a choice, of course. And I'm not backing up um, what Kanye had to say, but everything in life is a choice. We have a choice. Some of us chose to come here today. Some of us didn't. Some are shucking and jiving. Some are getting out. Some are working a job. Some are taking care of their parents. We made choices. Uh, we had many ancestors that chose to fight in their own way. Denmark Vesey, Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, Mother Harriet Tubman, others chose to fight. Queen Kandasi, Queen Nzinga over in the motherland, they chose to fight. There were others who fought in different ways. There were others who used psychology, tried to flip the script on the master, on white supremacy, <laughs> um, and tried to be cunning. There's many different ways to fight. But in everything, there is um, a choice. There was a choice 500 years ago. It was a choice 400 years ago. It was a choice yesterday. It's a choice today. And if the good Lord bless us, we'll have a choice tomorrow. So it's all about choices. In reference to how I look at it, I say with everything, hallelujah, anyhow. I say with everything, get up, stand up. Whatever it is, whatever the problem is, I've got to face it. I may have to get down on the floor, and there are days. There are days where you come on and you get in the field position. Literally, I'm sure we've all experienced that. How many of us have experienced that? Raise your hand. And if you really, really serve in the community, you're going to quadruple uh, those days. But after you finish mourning, crying, woe is me. You're entitled to a, a little bit of that, a touch of that, a taste of that. But you've got to say, hallelujah, anyhow, get up, stand up. I got to deal with this, and you've got to face it. Whether if the enemy is white supremacy, and it is, and it's global, and it is a moral, bankrupt, spiritual disease that's tentacle, is historical, and global. Everywhere on this earth, white supremacy is the order of the day. But the question is, what can we do 
both individual and collectively. It has to start with an individual. It has to start with me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my sister, it's not my brother, it's me. I got to transform, I got to change. I have to make a commitment that service is important, that making a better world is important, that we owe the ancestors who not only suffered a holocaust and no disrespect, recognize all holocaust. What the British did to the Irish, what happened to the Jews, but we ought to also recognize our holocaust and the hell of a cost that our ancestors paid and we're still paying. We owe our ancestors. Not only the Martins and, and the Malcolms and the Harriets and all of them, we owe the ones who their name is not in the history book. They're not on TV. They're not on the radio. They're not in the newspaper. But we benefit because of their sacrifice. We owe our ancestors. We owe the children in this room today, these young folks. We owe them. And we owe the unborn children. They're not here, but they come. So it's all a choice in our own way. Sometimes in big ways, sometimes in small ways. Sometimes it might just be a smile. You know, you crawl and then you walk and then you run. A smile towards each other. Men holding doors for women. Again, we're coming in and out. I see this. I let the door slam. Our civility, our love. How do you fight hate other than love? And the first love we need is with God. The second love we need is with us. The next love we need with that is black people globally. And then it goes to all of humanity. Because everybody on earth, in essence, is black. I mean, we do know that, right? Yeah. We, we don't do, hold those debates anymore, do we? Everybody comes from us, right? That's right. And when your children are wrong, you got to teach them right. Well. <laughs> you discipline, whatever, operate conditioning, whatever you can do to work with your kids. Our children, black people, are out of control. Yes, they are. And the world will not get right in my conclusion until we get right. That's right. We need to love each other. We need to choose to love each other. We need to choose to speak to each other. We need to choose to be nonviolent with one another. It's all a choice. So we need to choose to get up, stand up. Thank you. You guys enjoy the panel. Let me hear you. Yes, you. yes, yes. Wonderful. Gun violence initiative called D1 Can. D1 stands for District One. Can stands for Community Accountability Network. Because once again, I always say that we can't do it by ourselves from a government standpoint. That's going to be taking place on the 15th of this month, so the, this upcoming week, uh, over at the McKinney Center. I apologize, I don't have the exact address. But, uh, anyone who is interested in participating um, uh, and coming by, uh, please give my office a call. 313. 224-1027. Uh, and again, it's uh, D1CAN. 
This is our anti-gun violence initiative. Uh, we are kicking it off. We had two uh, team forums. This is now our opportunity to uh, engage the uh, overall community in District 1. So more information, please give my office a call, 313-224-1027. Thank you. All right. Does any other panelists have any uh, any other events? Are our hearts and minds clear? I just want to. I, want to ask, uh, I just want everybody to pray for me. I'm about to have my. Uh, I'm about to have my uh, 40th surgery in a couple of weeks. I had 39 surgeries after being hurt in a home invasion five years ago. Four on my elbow and 35 on my ankle, and I'll be having my 36th surgery on my ankle in a couple of weeks. So just pray for me. They told me that I would never walk again without my roller walker, which you see me walking here today, because I know Jesus for myself. And, and, they, and, and they, the doctors also told me uh, that I'll never run again, and I just told them I'll just run for office. First of all, prayers, Brother Carl. Uh, how many people saw about that Popeye's? Yeah, ain't that something? Okay. And no disrespect, brother, councilman. The city came, shut it down. Yep. The city has also let them reopen. I want to know how, because when the system is calling people, talking to managers, owners, calling officials, nothing happened. Then she does the tape. Then it took about two days for it to blow up. Then here come the city. Close them down, and now they're cleaned up and reopened in less than two weeks. I don't know about you. I saw a 10 minute tape. I saw rats and cockroaches and meat on the floor, and the sister was talking about it stank. I don't think you could do it. I don't think anybody has been over there. The message needs to go to the employees there, to management to ownership, whether it's an individual franchise or not, and to the national, that you will pay a price for selling death and filth and food to human beings, you, especially to our people. So tomorrow, we're going over there at 3 p.m. East 7 Mile and um, Gretchen. 3 p.m., we ask that you would come out and join us whatever amount of time that you can give, but we need to send a message that it is unacceptable. Today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank 3 p.m. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Farley, you have some information? Real quick. Um, I want everyone to know, in reference to the child support, I know you have a lot of roles for mothers and fathers. Uh, there's a state forgiveness plan or program that you can apply for. It's totally free. You need to Google it because what they're saying is that the money that's owed to the state in arrears, you can be forgiven for. Okay? Some of those fees that you've been charged has been due to penalties that Governor Engler put into place back in 1994. So you guys need to be able to file that motion or file that application is free. You can mail it from the house. You can never go down. But I'll tell you this, if you ever go down to the front of the court, you need to call first and ask, do I have a bench warrant? You guys always get locked up and then you get frustrated because you don't know the process. Go down there, fill out the application or ask for it by mail or on Google. You can print it up. Go to your library, fill it out, send it in. There's thousands and hundreds of dollars that you can be forgiven to recuperate what you need to do with the records of addressing that issue. But that's just one thing. Don't continue just to uh, worry about the money and not correct your actions. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, we're going to be waiting for lunch in about one second. We have more? Yeah. Wait a minute. I just want to read this little. Uh, little passion that I wrote for my uh, same class. It's, it's hard to build, then to destroy. To build is to engage in change. Your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be tricked by that one which is living the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinion drown your own inner voice. And most important, 
have the courage to follow your heart and intentions. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Let positive, strong, helpful thoughts enter into the brain. Let yourself, let yourself open to these thoughts. Our greatest weakness lies with giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. If you can't dream it, you can achieve it. Don't let what you can't do stop you from what you can do. Choosing to be positive and having a grateful attitude is going to determine how you're going to live your life. Continue to be strong. Continue to promote positivity. Continue to be the change. Depending on what they are, our habits will either make us or break us. We become what we the people we do. Life is 10% what happens to you. 90% is how you will react to it. Achieve, achievement seems to be connected with actions. Successful men and women keep moving. They really mis they may they make mistakes, but they don't quit. Success is a journey, not a destination. Any uh, event, you, you, you struggle to stay in a time frame. You all, you're right there at the cusp of uh, sort of uh, having lunch. Uh, but we had some folks we needed to recognize right quick, and I promise we're going to keep this real quick. Um, uh, Otis, you want to go first? You want to go first with yours? How's everybody doing? <laughs> Listen, that, uh, you all can hear me, right? Yeah. At one third, first of all, Let's clap and give it up to Brother Malik for putting this on. You know, you know, today at 1.30 to 3.30, we are getting the last 25 to 50 young men. Since June 25th, we, we had an initiative called 100 Ties with a Smile, where we taught 974 young men how to tie a tie from June 25th. Wow. And today is the culmination Woo! ceremony. Y'all clap for that. Clap. Uh, so uh, at 1.30, uh, you can see some of us grown folks don't know how to tie a tie too. <laughs> so you know what? You can stay and you get to keep the tie. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, you get to keep the tie. So uh, but somebody asked me, why don't you teach a thousand young men how to tie a tie? The thing about it is this. Our young men need guidance as this conversation. And one thing about it is when you teach someone how to tie a tie, that is one of the times that you are permitted into their personal space. So, so then you can, in order to get transformation, you have to get dialogue. So the thing about it, some of the young men, and some of them in here today, I purposely went slow with them because I wanted to get more dialogue with them. So that's what we're doing. You know, we talked about skilled trades and different jobs. But even if your job do not require you to wear a tie, chances are if you go to a, a interview, you're going to have to wear a what? Tie. So uh, thank you all. Please stay at 130. We definitely appreciate you. And we have a speaker that's going to just talk to you briefly about the young men getting, and, and the young ladies, getting their mindsets from summer to school. Because a lot of times you go to school and you're not ready to learn until that second month, but guess what hits you? All these state tests. So, I mean, we're going to talk about how to transform your mind from summer to school. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. So, you want to do uh, what you think is doing that time frame, too, but I going to do it. Yes, sir. Okay. The two young guys, now, and then the other one's there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we were looking at doing. That's cool. We do the two now. That's cool. Okay. Uh, you got you got those or up here? I got it. Okay. Make this brief, y'all. I won't take much time. So, my parents, can we get pictures of this? Two young males we wanted to honor 
and they've been in the program for probably about a year, year and a half, and they have uh, actually attended about 90% of the time. So again, we got certificates for all you young men, but today is just two, one out of here for the most improved. And, and both of these young men have some parental challenges. Both of these young, both of these young men have a story that if I told it, it wouldn't be a dry eye here. Mm. But what they've done is, I'm not saying they've done everything right, but they've improved. <laughs> they've improved. So uh, we have uh, a certificate for Caleb Isaac Brown and Lewis Nolan Jordan. Uh -huh. Lewis Nolan You know what? I'm looking this, at this as a special day, and is there any way that just the panel can just, just, just come up here and just uh, put some love on these brothers? They're gonna take pictures with all you guys, and you can step down. Yep. Appreciate it. That's why you're listening. Appreciate it, good people. Right. <laughs> you ready to smile? You said five dollars. You ready to smile now? Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Right. Count on y'all. Right. Good job. You can still be tough and smile. Oh, they still back on the panel? Yeah, because we just have two more recognitions. Our total recognition goes. I'm gonna let everybody go. And again, I greatly Thank you, brother, appreciate you all. Oh, no problem, brother, because I have one for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's not too many people in this room who don't know what you've been doing. We all been watching, especially me. I mean, I've been doing Christian Griffin over there for 11 years. I know what's happening in this city in regards to brothers really working. You really work. So with that said, brother, I'm going to make sure that I honor you. Oh, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I need to take a second because we have two other youth from our program, Manpower Mentoring and this Attitude Adjustment. The Attitude Adjustment Program, the director is here today. Uh, her name is Shaquille Wardlow, and that, if, if people don't know about the Attitude Adjustment Program, it's actually one of the only uh, programs left in Michigan that specifically does the uh, jail tours for children between the ages of 12 and 18 years of old, age. And uh, that pre and post counseling with the parents and the children is one of the things that she's committed to doing. She's been doing so. I'm going to let her present her two certificates uh, quickly, but also I want to make sure that I present her with her certificate of recognition because without that program, the Empower Mentoring is going to continue to do the work that we're doing. Uh -huh. okay, we'll And so um, we recognize you. All right, how y'all doing today? First of all, I'd like to give an honor to Christ, who's ahead of my life, because I don't know how y'all feeling today, but these brothers took up the church. And then I was like, y'all know who y'all think is uh, It's a little intimidating to sit at the table with these brothers here to be here, so. I would like to thank, I know we mentioned um, X and Bella Brown, but I'd like to thank Ken Williams as well because this is their brainchild. Um, I work with Manpower Mentoring, I'm behind the scenes, but this is what these gentlemen came up with to celebrate our black men. And I would like to give a shout out to them. Thank you guys, because this is a wonderful event. Of course, we wish we had a packed house. If this was a cabaret, it probably would have been standing room only. But considering that all we had was positive things, employment, health care, things of that nature, printed a court, 
things of that nature. You only got a few people in here, but I'm thankful and grateful for everybody that showed up and showed out. Because it looks to be here. And I have to say a thank you to our phenomenal panel. Oh my gosh. I have chill bumps knowing that we have all of you guys in one place. But without further ado, because I got mom in here, mom got to go to work for one of our kids. But I had three individuals that I wanted to recognize today. Um, Attitude Adjustment is a behavior modification program. It is my baby, and it's something that I've been working on for over 13 years now. Um, if you don't know, I started with the Dose of Reality Tour. Um, we did that for a little while, and then after that, we transitioned to using the Ryan Correctional Facility for the boys and Huron Valley for the girls. This is a personal thing for me because when I had problems with my little brother after the death of my mom, there were no prevention programs out here that can handle the behavior that he exhibited. And when I reached out for help, the only solution that was given was to terminate my rights, turn him over to the state, and let the state raise him. There was nothing in place for me to be able to love on my child while he was in the home, but yet still provide some type of counseling, some, some type of therapeutic measure to restructure the behavior okay so with everything that i tried with him i put it together in the program i brought it to mr Pelican, which is one of my mentors and manpower mentoring took it on and we've been rolling ever since so we service hundreds of kids a year but only a couple of them stand out and those are the ones that actually get a whole 360 improvement when i reach out in 90 days to see how the children are doing to provide other services i expect for them to I guess change for a few of the behaviors because you can't change overnight. You've been bad for a long time. It's gonna take longer than 90 days to get it right. But I do ask the children to at least try and put forth effort. It's rare that I do a follow-up and they've done a complete 360. Now two of the children are not here and I'm gonna accept their certificates. And if you watch the WBIV Channel 4 interview with Everett Cassidy, they were the twins that we had on the show. Now one of them did a complete improvement overnight. The other one, I actually seen him again months later when I did the tour, and his probation officer sent him. So sometimes it takes a little longer. So that is Don Quill Hall and I2 Hall, and they are not here today because they don't work. They got called in. So, because they did a complete 360. It took one a little longer than the other, but they still did it. And I have another gentleman who is actually here today, and that's Gary Andrews. I followed up with his mom. I was like, I'm coming up here. And his brother, Mae. I'm trying. I'm to follow her. Because she has such a good story to share as far as his behavior and his turnaround. Baron, this is you. I appreciate you, brother, for everything you have done. Because it ain't easy, baby. It ain't easy. And you've done that. So thank you for staying. Thank you for being part of the program. And mom, thank you for entrusting me with your child. Because, uh, what else do I so, um, uh, without further ado, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. If you want any more information about attitude adjustment, give us a call 313 571 3195 or 313 This month, the boys' tour is on the 31st and the girls' tour is on the 28th. So, you have time if you need it. Thank you so much. Okay, and so that's going to get us to just two more folks, and then we're done. We can, uh, I'll be out your way. Sorry for that uh, for the time frame. Uh, the other one is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that we actually have a um, a uh, human trafficking prevention program. It's called uh, Black Girls Matter. Uh, actually, um. My partner, she came up with the program about two years ago, and since then she's been out here just kind of communicating with folks in the community and providing education and working with folks uh, in regards to this program because uh, human trafficking is a very, very big problem. Um, often you see folks uh, out here alone and they're walking and they're, you, you, they seem out of place where they are because uh, they've been displaced and the next step may be uh, if not prison, then probably uh, kidnapped or somewhere where they shouldn't be. And often these folks are out of the country by the time we realize that they're even missing. Um, but uh, Shanita Carriker is the one who created that program, and I just wanted to recognize you. I know you're often afraid to come in front of people. You're going to have to come get this one, sister. Come and get this one. Ah!
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the last one, uh, the last one, first of all, uh, before I present this person, I want to say something about uh, a brother who's been supporting me uh, as much as I need to give him a plaque, and, and my plaque didn't come uh, quick enough for me to be able to give it to him today, but I did order it. Uh, he is a brother that told me, don't quit. Don't stop. See, I thought I was mentoring him. Because I've been actually mentoring him for it's been over 10 years or longer than that, maybe. 19 years, man. It's been that long. I think this boy was this young man was uh at the time he was 18 years old. Uh, maybe younger, but now he's I guess he's in his late 30s, 40s, or something like that. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the plank didn't come back fast enough, but I want you to come here just for a second, brother. Kenneth Williams. Uh, even when I was telling the boy this event, and uh, I told him what kind of discussion I wanted to have, he said, man, don't be afraid. Do what you need to do. This is the man who got my back, and I appreciate it. All right, so I miss you today. That's kind of embarrassing, but I had to recognize. The last one is uh, Anthony Bird. Do you leave? Okay, young man, you want me to bring it to you? You want to come get it? Because I need to recognize you, brother. I appreciate it. A great foundation in the house. Uh, this brother, we go way back, and he came in. You just got back in town to help me out. Yeah. Yeah, it's the bird. This bird upgrade the house. All right, so thank you so much, uh, panelists. Awesome. We're going to do it again. I hope that uh, we are able to really get to the people. But now we're going to turn it around to the point where we actually do some, uh, some follow up in regards to some of the things we want to do. That's why we have the workshops this afternoon for some of the people who might want to attend those. So make sure that you. Uh, Look at your uh, booklet because this is what's going to show you where the workshops are if you're interested in them. Uh, and then enjoy your lunch. And I want to thank each and every one of you all for participating today. Thank you. What's up, world? It's your man, the one on Mr. Sam 44 Man. That was a powerful, powerful event that took place today. And uh, I hope that you all got a chance to, if you didn't get down here, you got a chance to take it out and, 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 and took notes on what's going on because we really have a problem with our black young men. And we need to get ourselves together and we need to make sure that it can happen. So that's why I'm down here. You're tuned in to the Detroit Raw Show, one of the hottest shows seen in the city of Detroit. Seen around the world with your man, me, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 Man. It's lunchtime, and I've been on this air for about a couple of hours, so let me get ready for my next spot, and we'll see what's going on. Detroit Raw, right here, only on Facebook, YouTube, and VentRadio.net. It's your man, the one and only Mr. Sam 44 Man.